Collaborating with other people on an editing project has a tendency to be problematic, especially when the people you're collaborating with are in a completely different location. Luckily, Blackmagic Design has made it a lot easier for DaVinci Resolve users to collaborate with their release of Blackmagic Cloud. And today, with the help of my friend Ruben, we're going to take a look at how to use Blackmagic Cloud to collaborate with other editors, no matter where in the world they are. Thank you, Jay, for letting me be part of these amazing tests. Blackmagic Design, keep making awesome stuff. Also, I've got two DaVinci Resolve Studio licenses to give away. So, you know, stick around. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that Ruben is actually doing a trailer editing contest on his channel. The grand prize is a studio license and second place gets a one hour one on one with me to discuss whatever you want to talk about. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the link in the description after watching this video. But for now, let's jump into our project, starting with what we need in order to make all of this work. In order to collaborate on an editing project using Blackmagic Cloud, everyone in the project needs to have a Blackmagic Magic Cloud account. It's free to sign up, but at least one person also needs to have a project library on the cloud, which costs $5 a month. The good news is that there aren't any contracts, so you can sign up for a project, and when the project is done, you can cancel without penalties. Second, in order to get the best possible performance and experience while editing, it's a good idea to have everyone you're collaborating with on the same version of DaVinci Resolve. That way you can all be sure that all of the tools and features are available to everyone. And finally, in order for any of this to work, we need to find a way to share the files between all of our collaborators. Traditionally, this is done with something like we transfer or mailing a hard drive, but that takes forever, especially considering I'm in Baltimore and Ruben is in Italy. So our solution for this was to set up a shared folder in Google Drive and for each of us to have a folder on our computer that was synced with that shared folder. It took a minute to get set up, but once we did, it worked pretty flawlessly. For this project, Ruben is helping me with the timeline edit and the audio mixing while I'm focusing on fusion and color grading. This means that really Ruben can get away with using proxies, which is going to make our workflow a lot faster since we don't have to transfer the full res files over Google Drive. There are a couple ways to create proxies in DaVinci Resolve, but the easiest way to do it is to use the Blackmagic proxy generator that comes along with DaVinci Resolve 18. It's a separate app from Resolve, so all you have to do is open it up, select the folder with the video files you need to create proxies for, and click start. Then we can copy our proxy files into our shared Google Drive folder, and in about a minute, Ruben is able to access those files all the way on the other side of the world. I also added the audio files that Ruben would need in order to do the sound design. Next, it's time to set up our project in Blackmagic Cloud, which is almost exactly like setting up a project in DaVinci Resolve, but with a couple extra steps. First, the owner of the project library in the cloud needs to open up their project manager, click on cloud in the top left, and sign into their Blackmagic Cloud account. From there, you can create a project, load in your media, and prepare for the edit. In order for our collaborators to be able to edit in the same project, a couple of things need to happen. First, we need to turn our project into a multi-user project. To do this, open your project manager, right click on the project and select multiple user collaboration. Then click on the details icon next to your project library name and in the bottom left, click share. Enter the email addresses that your collaborators use to create their cloud account. And then an email will be sent to your collaborators, letting them know that you invited them into your project library. From there, your collaborators just need to open their project managers, click on cloud, and they will be able to open up the project just like they would any other. Once your collaborators are in the project, the first thing they'll notice is that all of the media clips are listed as offline. To fix this, they need to relink the clips to the media files in the folder where they stored their proxies. Once that's done, everyone should be able to work on the same project in Resolve at the same time with some caveats. Caveat number one. Actually, this is really the only caveat. Not really sure why I said some. Anyway, here's the thing. Only one person can work on any one page at a time, and whoever landed on that page first is the official editor for that page. For example, when we first started our project, I was on the edit page first, and Ruben was unable to drag any footage onto the timeline. That was a little confusing at first, but once we figured it out, everything went smooth. First, Ruben put together a timeline complete with a soundstage, then 
I refreshed the timeline and boom, everything was there. From there, Ruben was able to jump into Fairlight and start mixing while I jumped into Fusion and then the color page. It really does make the collaborative experience so much more smooth and streamlined when you don't have to constantly send project files back and forth. Plus, these collaborative projects have a couple other tools that make the workflow easier. For example, chat. Let's say I wanted to make sure that Ruben added a particular clip in the edit. All I have to do is click on the chat icon at the bottom of the screen, type my message and hit enter. Ruben will get a notification and then he can check the message and respond. The only issue with the chat feature is the fact that the messages don't save. They all get deleted when you close resolve. So this really is only helpful when there's more than one person signed on. If you want to send a message to someone who's not logged on, the best thing to do would be to create a marker on the timeline. The markers show up in real time on everyone's computer and it's a convenient way to mark a part of the video that might need work. Now, in the spirit of collaboration, I have two DaVinci Resolve Studio licenses that I want to give to someone. You know, one for you and one for a friend. So you can, you know, collaborate. To enter, just leave me a comment on this video explaining why you want the studio license and what you think about Blackmagic Cloud. Would you use it? Would it improve your collaboration workflow? Let me know. Your comment must contain the words DaVinci Resolve Studio in order to be considered. I'll be replying to the comments of the winners one week from today with instructions on how to collect your prize. That's this date right up here. So go leave your comments down below and on your way down there, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Then go check out this video right here and until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.